What if I told you the movie Finding Nemo accidentally created the perfect explanation for one of computer science's most elegant search algorithms? Today, we're diving deep into how Finding Nemo teaches us the hierarchical navigable small word algorithm, or HMSW for sure. HMSW transformed an impossible challenge of searching through billions of items into something achievable in milliseconds. HMSW quickly became one of the backbones of modern vector similarity search, and I'll bet this is the reason why you picked this video to watch, right? Well, I'm glad you're here, and if you stick to the end, I promise you, you won't regret it. When Nemo gets taken to Sydney, Marlin faces an impossible challenge. He needs to find one tiny clownfish in the entire ocean. If he tried to check every single fish, one by one, it would take him years. We call this linear search, or O of N complexity in computer science. HNSW transformed this into a logarithm search, or O log of N, which is way faster, let's put it this way. This is exactly what Marlin wanted, a faster way to find Nemo. Let's dive into how HNSW works. Let's start with one fundamental concept. Imagine every fish as a point in a multi-dimensional space based on characteristics like helpfulness or size or swimming style, etc. Similar fish will naturally cluster together. The rare fish here, sharks there, turtles elsewhere. This clustering of data is what HNSW exploits the most. The magic happens through a small word network. Dory knows both the rare fish and sharks. The shark Bruce, on the other hand, knows about the EAC, the East Australian Current. In the EAC, the turtle crush knows the way to Sydney. These long-range connections transform an impossible search into a navigable journey. HNSW formalizes this by creating a hierarchical graph. Each layer is a proximity graph where fish connect to their nearest neighbors. But here's the trick. Not every fish appears in every layer. The number of layers grows on a logarithm scale. A hundred fish, for example, might need two layers. A million fish might need six layers, whereas one billion fish may need nine. So as you can see, space-wise, HNSW is also a very efficient data structure. It means that more data doesn't mean proportionally more layers. This is the power of logarithm scaling. Mine, mine, mine. Let's follow Marlin's journey to better understand HNSW's search algorithm. HNSW uses greedy search, starting from the highest layer. Marley meets Dory, who exists in multiple layers. Dory is a good example of what we call a hubby node, which connect different communities. The EAC represents the highest layer, with sparse but powerful connections spanning vast distances. When Marlin rides with Crush, the turtle, he efficiently uses these long-range connections. When he reaches Sydney's vicinity, the algorithms drop the to lower layers for refinement search, sparse layers for course navigation and dense layers for precision. The idea here is, at each layer, move toward the target until you can't get any closer, then drop down. It's like taking highways as far as possible, then switching to local roads. Here's the beauty of this. When Marlin finally reaches Sydney Harbor, he only checks for a few fish instead of checking for a millions of them. The hierarchical structure guided him to precisely the right neighborhood. This is O log of N in action. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Now let's discuss how data is organized. With HNSW, layer assignment is probabilistic. New fish are assigned at a maximum layer using an exponential distribution. Most stay in lower layers, and some become highway connectors. 
This creates a self-organizing structure that maintains itself as the ocean grows. Of course, by ocean we are meaning your data set. This creates HNSW's foundation through three key principles. The first one is the small world phenomenon. Just like how Marlin reached Sydney through only a few key connections. For example, Dory connected to Bruce, Bruce connected to Crush. Any two points in the data can be connected through a small number of hooks. The second principle is navigability. At each step, you can greedily move closer to your target, just like Marlin always moved towards Sydney. And the third principle is hierarchy. Having multiple layers means you can search efficiently, whether you have a hundred fish or a billion. Let's apply what you have learned so far with a quick demo using vector sets. Vector sets are a new data type introduced in Redis 8 that allows you to store and query high dimensional vector embeddings. At the heart of vector sets implementation is the HNSW algorithm. I will demonstrate how HNSW works by reproducing Marlin's relationships with the fishes shown in the Finding Nemo movie. As we execute a vector similarity search on the data, this is the graph output that we should see. First, we start with Marlin. Marlin meets Dory, who leads them to the sharks. After that, they meet the moonfish, then the turtles, then the whale, then Nigel, and finally reaching Nemo. So let's start this demo by explaining what's going to be the data that we're going to put into Redis. So as you can see here, I'm using the command vAdd, which is the, uh, the command that you can use to add data into a vector set. So the name of the key that we're going to use is going to be called finding Nemo for obvious purposes. And then along with that key, we're going to associate a set of embeddings. Uh, in this case, we're going to add five dimensions, right? But you are free to use how many dimensions you set properly. Each one of those dimensions are carrying some uh, peculiar, peculiar information from the fishes, such as, for example, uh, the journey position, uh, the helpfulness of the journey, the size of the fish, etc., etc. And those are going to be the names of each element, Nigel, Dory, Whale, Moonfish. And along with each element, you can optionally right, set a specific set of attributes that uh, you put this in this JSON format. So, uh, I'm going to execute this command. So as you can see here, uh, the data has been added. And one thing I would like to point out before we continue is that all the data has been added in a kind of a random order. So I didn't like put them in a bison order or the order that I want them to be shown when we perform the search. Um, so you can really believe that the output is going to be based on the embeddings that we have set for this, right? So I'm um, going to clear the results and then we can actually inspect the data type that's being used here using the command type. So as you can see here, we're using a vector set. And uh, the, also, the other command that you can also use is the command vinfo, right? So the vinfo command kind of gives you like a debug visualization of that specific key uh, for all the metadata that is peculiar to the vector set. So for example, the type of quantization that we're using. So by default, vector sets use it uh, integer, uh, the eight, right? So there are some specific attributes that are unique to the HNSW algorithm. So it's very interesting because of this. Now let's do what we're all here for, which is performing the actual search, right? So we're going to use the command vsim or vsimilarity, if you will. So we provide the key that you were going to perform the similarity search. And those are going to be the values that basically is going to kind of uh, mimic all the relationships from all the fishes, right? So from the uh, the very early uh, type of fish added to the, the the maximum position. So if we execute this right now, you're going to see that the order represents what we were expecting before. So it all started with Morley and then Dory, then meets the sharks, that led them to the moonfish, then the turtles, the whale, Nigel, and to finally uh, reach and min Nemo, right? So one of the interesting things that you can actually do with the vector set, now that you saw that it did exactly work, it is also kind of a do a little bit of debugging of the 
proximity between the elements. For example, if you want to see what are the three closest fishes uh, near to marlin, we can use this command here, and as you can see, the fishes are marlin itself, dory, and the sharks, right? So if we do the same thing for dory, remember that dory is one of the hub nodes, right? So she connects through different layers. Um, we're going to see that, yeah, there's dory itself, then the sharks, and the moonfish, right? Um, and finally, you can also use, like, the attributes that we have used before to perform some specific type of searches. So in this case, for example, we're searching for all the fishes that are either the helpers, right, or they are transporters. So th those are fishers that carry over, right, for a specific uh, destination. So in this case, it's going to be Dory. Dory is definitely the most helper, uh, according to the movie, right? You can see that she's always trying to kind of make her best to uh, help Marlin to find Nemo. And the turtles, to, who are actually the carriers that lead them to uh, Sydney, right, to the final destination. So, as you can see, the this is the proof that the HNSW algorithm is correctly working with the vector size implementation at Redis, and, I mean, it is awesome, as you can see here. Let's recap what Finding Nemo taught us today. First, hierarchical organization matters. Just like the ocean has local rafts, regional territories, and ocean-spanning currents, HNSW builds multiple scales of organization that grow logarithmically with your data. Second, not all connections are equal. Hub nodes, like Dory, who bridge different communities are essential for maintaining the small world property. And third, greedy navigation works when you have the right structure. By always moving toward your target and dropping layers strategically, you can find anything quicker. This isn't just theoretical anymore. Right now, HNSW powers, Spotify's recommendation systems, similarity search and open AI's embeddings, image search at Pinterest, and countless other applications handling billions of vectors. The beauty of computer science, in my opinion, is that elegant solutions often mirror patterns in nature and storytelling. Take Pixar's animators, for example. They created an ocean that perfectly demonstrates advanced graph theory that is shown in the movie, probably without even knowing it. So, the next time you are designing a system that needs to find data quickly, just remember this. You don't need to check every fish in the ocean. The only thing you need is just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming through hierarchical navigable small words. Hierarchical navigable small words. You got it? You got it? See you in the next time.